Today on 2D's Track Analysis, we have the track of the day for January 5th, Light Rider by Nibbles Me Kibble. Light Rider is a non-traditional full-speed track with a surface of road, though I cannot say with any confidence that there are no other surfaces as the track is invisible. The invisible track certainly makes Light Rider unique looking, but it also makes it quite the challenge to drive. There is a single finish with two pass. The harder requires about 520 speed to make properly, though you can still take this path with low speeds. I finish Light Rider with a time of 41.955, just beating out the author time of 42.075. I found the track somewhat unenjoyable to drive, the visibility being the main reason for this. So on the plus minus rating scale, I give Light Rider a minus rating. So at the start of the analysis here, we'll see that the world record ghost takes a wildly different line than I do. I always struggled through this part. I really had no idea what I was meant to do. And two locations here at the start, I was always sliding out on and losing a ton of speed. Had really no idea why either. Obviously, the track is invisible and you cannot see your tires or skid marks for that matter. So it was always hard to tell what was actually happening. But as you can see, the different route at the start has the world record already well ahead of me. This extra speed will allow them to get a little bit smoother landing than me here. And for this jump right here, they also take a much further inside line than I do. They'll jump off to the left here very early and I will just take it down the middle. And for the upcoming turn, uh, we take pretty similar lines here, just a little bit off. They'll allow them to get a little bit extra speed, but overall not too bad there. As for this upcoming jump to the upper platform, I had a lot of problems with this. Most of the time I was so fast here that I felt like I would have to let go. I suppose taking the line the world record does here, jumping from the outside to the inside part would reduce some of that. But a lot of the times, yeah, I felt like I was having too much speed here and needed to release in order to make it cleanly. But we'll make it up perfectly fine as we had low speed coming in. But then on the exit, you want to be going a little bit to the left here. Otherwise, if you land on the right side of this platform, you will have a very hard time getting around the gap. And as you can see, we take the left hand jump and make our way around all those little gaps. If you manage to get through there, you got to take all these little hops. And then at this location, you need about 520 speed to make this giant gap. And if you manage that, so you just got to get the clean landing and drive to the finish. So the invisible track today made it a little bit difficult to see what was going on. Obviously no tire marks and seeing how your car interacts with the road itself made it a little bit difficult to go a little bit more in depth with this one. I was on the edge of giving this one a minus minus rating, but decided to give it a minus. I thought the route itself was decent, just the visuals itself made it very difficult to see what was going on. That being said, getting a second author medal this month was pretty nice, though it was on the easier side so I can see a lot of people getting this one. That's going to be it for today though, hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content like this. Be sure to check the description for links to my Twitch and Discord if you're interested in those, and be sure to check out all the other Trekmania content on the channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next one.